Hey guys, Bradley Washer here, and in this video, we're going to be discussing reflections. We're gonna be breaking that down into two major categories, the first being screen space reflections, and the other one being reflection capture actors. The first thing I wanna explain a little bit is the setup in the scene, just so it makes sense. We have a directional light, a post-process volume, a light mass importance volume, and three chrome spheres. The difference between the spheres is just in the roughness, 0, 0.25 and 0.6, just to show you what's happening. So let's talk about the first thing that can affect your reflections. And that is what's referred to as screen space reflections. Screen space reflections are generated as soon as we add a post-process volume. You can notice that even with deleting our post-process volume, they're still there. Uh, that is because by default in Unreal, the camera has its own, any camera, has its own post-process stack, so we're always going to see them. If we have one on our scene and it's overriding, it will be the main thing. So if we click on our post-process volume, we can see a little bit about what is happening with our reflections. If we come into the post-process volume, screen space reflections, and you'll notice three settings. The first one is how much the screen space reflection is influencing our reflective objects. You can see if I set this to zero, how much it changes, the quality being the samples and how accurate that's going to be. This is default at 50. And max roughness lets us know at what roughness does screen space reflections actually influence our materials. Obviously at 0.6, which is the default, it really is affecting it. If we turn it up higher, you can notice that the rougher material, it doesn't really matter. We do these extra calculations. So this is a performance gain for sure um, in terms of the calculating our scene. Now, you might be asking yourself, how does this work? Well, the short of it is it's capturing the information on screen, doing some kind of hacky math in terms of knowing where the, uh, pixels fall in the depth buster buffer, versus their color. And the caveat is that if an object is on screen, you can see our character right here, as soon as he's off screen, that depth information is lost, that color information is lost. So anything off the screen will not be reflected. You'll also notice this with this black area and we move up, the floor is gone, so he doesn't know it reflects it, so you get an error. It's kind of a hacky thing that's kind of okay and just fast enough to be great for games, just like most things in games. Uh, so hopefully that explains a little bit about this. The last thing I wanna talk about on screen space reflection is if you're having a slow project, mobile, or you're trying to get it faster, disabling this completely uh, by setting it to zero can be a performance improvement. So just put that in your pocket. The next thing I wanna talk about is a more general approach to reflections. So as of right now, we're only seeing the reflections based on screen space reflections, which are kind of error prone. The most common thing we need to do is add a sphere reflection capture to our scene. What this will do is generate a point and a influence. So any mesh within this sphere, what's gonna end up happening is it will position from this spot right here. It's gonna take six images of our scene, render them out, capture them, distort them into a sphere, and allow us to use that information to approximate what reflections look like from this point in the level. This will give us an appropriate amount of parallax and change as we move around our objects to make it believable enough that that object is actually reflecting what we see. Again, it's not 100% accurate, but for games, it is good enough. So what we end up needing to do once we add it to our scene is we can come to this little arrow next to build, build reflection captures. You'll notice that sometimes this will shift a little bit and change just to make sure it's extremely accurate. And now what we're noticing is a blend between the static reflection uh, capture action and our screen space reflection kind of leaking in whenever we move around. So you'll notice that sometimes there's a little bit of an artifact and some differences. In total, that's really all you need to know to get reflections working in your scenes. There's obviously a few more kind of caveats, one being that you can add smaller influence radiuses around your level 
Be aware that what Unreal is going to do is blend them together, and sometimes it gets you an, uh, a result you don't really care for, but the smaller influence radius will win out, but ultimately it will blend. So let's say we have these two, it will blend them together, and you'll notice that you get a bit of a distorted, kind of odd look sometimes if you're not careful, and it's something to pay attention to. So just a caveat. Also, one other thing to know about that some people don't realize is the more reflection probes you add, the more expensive you are making these materials to render because it has to average between all of them. So again, if you want to make your levels run faster, minimize the number of total overlaps uh, that you have influencing particular meshes. It's sometimes it'll make it look bad too. So that's usually my rule of thumb, make it look good. So on closing, I'll explain just a little bit about box reflection. The only difference between box reflections and sphere reflections is the way in which they capture the data. This is doing a box projection without distorting into a cube. The problem with that is you will get distortion at the corners if you put this in any room that isn't a square. So if you're making an apartment or a square room in a house, this is absolutely perfect. You'll get less distortion. Um, this is actually a more accurate reflection in terms of a square. Uh, but for most things, organic environments, things with odd angles, a sphere reflection capture is going to be perfect. Especially because if things fall outside of an influence volume, as you can kind of notice over here on this sphere, as it falls out, things change. So if you, if you had like a crooked room, it might be hard to set these up properly um, to fit that space. One last thing we're not gonna cover in this video today is plane reflections, because they're kind of a bigger topic that I'd like to cover. But hopefully again, this clears up some of the confusion about how to get different reflection qualities inside of your scenes. I will leave you with one kind of last kind of little optimization and that's something people sometimes don't realize and that's the texture that was captured can actually be changed uh, you can change its resolution so if you go to edit project settings you'll get a nice pop-up you move this over go to rendering right here and we'll scroll down till you see reflections now by default this value is set to 128 and you'll see I have a certain fidelity in the image, the texture that was saved from the, the, the reflection capture. I can put this as high as 1024 and get a very crisp image. Again, you are paying a texture cost. You have six 1024 is now out of your scene and the information has to be processed down and distorted. So you are losing performance as well. So Unreal defaults to about 128. Let's say you need to really optimize your product. You could set this to 64, and it, that seems to be the lowest that Unreal will let you set it, at least from the in-game project settings. So again, hopefully that helps you. If it did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If there's something you want me to cover, um, game dev related or game art related, just let me know in the comments. Um, if this was helpful, also leave a comment and let me know. So. Again, I will see you guys in the next one and cheers.